Should you use AFLOG with your Fujifilm camera? I've seen it talked about many different times on blogs and Reddit, etc, etc. But I feel like you kind of have to try it yourself to sort of figure out what works, what doesn't. And that's what I'm going to do. Or that's what I did do this week. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and another video. I know things uh, look a little bit different here and sound probably a lot different. Um, it's very echoey in here. I'm in the office, which I mentioned in previous videos, currently in the process of uh, doing it, putting it together. There's nothing in here, hence the echo. I've tried my best with some tiles and some blankets to mute things, but apologies for you having to listen to this echoey audio the entire video. But anyway, a while back, like quite a while back, um, the 20th of November 2021 to be exact, I did a video quite similar to this one where I tried out F-Log. And during that time I was using the X-T30 to try out F-Log because I wanted to figure out whether I should use it for the videos or little cinematic videos and stuff. And I shot it on the X-T30 with 200 megabit files in 4K and in that video I said the footage looked nice and the colour grade sort of went as planned. Things looked good and I uploaded it and it wasn't until I had watched the video back a few times both in Premiere and just in the video player after I rendered it that I noticed some things you don't want to see when you're colour grading footage uh, and that is like blotchiness. Um, there was like blotchiness and weird colour. Um, I don't know if you call it artifacts or not but Weird um, weird things with the colours. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> That's the technical term. Weird things with the colours. But yeah, things you don't want to see where essentially the footage was falling apart a little bit in areas. I did actually leave a comment under that video explaining this because in the video I kind of made out that everything looked pretty good, which I thought it did at the time. But fast forward till now and I wanted to try it again, but because we have the Fuji X-T3 now, I can shoot in with the 400 megabit files. So 4K, 400 megabit files, F-Log, and that's a big difference. Instead of the 200 megabit files and I have 400, that's a lot more data to work with. And what I was hoping was that F-Log would then look a lot better and be usable with no real issues and the color grade and everything would work out pretty nicely. So I won't waste any more of your time because I know you want to see it. So here's some footage using the Fuji X-T3 4K F-Log using the 400 megabit files. Actually, one more thing just before we get into it, just in case you're not sure or you've never shot F-Log, uh, I'll show you the settings in camera just as to how you actually shoot F-Log.
I'm not sure if you agree, but I think that that footage looks pretty damn nice, I must say. Um, I'm not going to get into the technicalities uh, too much about shooting the F-Log. First of all, because it's kind of boring, and secondly, because I don't really know that much about it, to be honest. Um, but I know when you're shooting the F-Log or any log profile really on any of the cameras, you want to make sure you're overexposing by, I'm pretty sure they recommend at least a stop or maybe two um, to retain all the shadow detail and stuff and get the best results possible out of F-Log. You're not supposed to underexpose it. Kind of like film, I suppose, if you want to think about it that way. But um, when I was shooting all these clips, I have my zebras set at 95%, so it shows the zebras just a little bit before things are actually blown out. And with F-Log that worked pretty perfectly. I was able to expose things until the zebras started to appear on screen. And then I would adjust the aperture or adjust the ND filter or something um, to make sure there was no zebras on screen. So nothing was being overexposed. But that did leave me exposing at normally two stops over or just under it on the little um, meter reading at the side of the camera. But I also kept an eye on the histogram and stuff just to make sure nothing was actually um, peaking up at the brighter end and it wasn't. So yeah, that's how I made sure I wasn't totally overexposing anything while sort of overexposing at the same time. <laughs> Hopefully this isn't uh, too confusing. Now, I'm sure you're like me and when you watch these kind of videos, you kind of want to see the color grading process quite quick and to the point to see how things change because it's kind of satisfying to watch and just good to know how the process goes. So I'll show you. So F-Log footage is obviously really flat with really low contrast and this is to keep the detail in the highlights and the shadows so you have more room to play around and adjust things in post. But to use F-Log in your videos, you first need to convert it to a usable state, something like Rec 709, which is like a standard color profile for video. Fujifilm actually has a few free conversion lots on their website to convert F-Log to Rec 709 and there's a few different options. The one I decided to go with was F-Log to Eterna. Now I know I always say that I use Astia Soft when I'm recording just with the film simulations in camera. I love how it looks and it's probably my favourite, but unfortunately there is no conversion lot on Fujifilm's website to Astia. Um, I haven't looked around enough to find another one yet, so that's what I went with and it actually turns out pretty well. So anyway, I used the conversion lot to convert the footage to Rec 709 which to be honest I thought looked pretty decent straight away and um, just a little bit too contrasty for me. So I then added another adjustment layer to the timeline and made some tweaks to the white balance, highlights and shadows and some of the colours in the highlights and shadows. And that's pretty much about it. We also recorded a couple of shots indoors with some really harsh light shining in through the window because I wanted to see how well it would keep detail in the skin tones and also the shadows with this harsh light uh, and also just generally how the skin tones looked using F-Log. So here's the straight out of camera F-Log shot and then with the F-Log to Eterna conversion lot applied and then with my extra adjustment layer. And I think the footage turned out really nicely. This was about as contrasty of a scene as you could get with really harsh light coming through the window and really dark shadows. And as you can see, we've kept all the detail and color in the skin tones and it just looks really nice. Uh, it did take a little bit more tweaking for this shot than the other ones, but I was kind of expecting that. So it's safe to say F-Log with the 400 megabit files on the X-T3 turned out pretty nicely. I really like how the footage turned out and um, that's using the F-Log to Eterna profile like I said but I still really like the colours. Um, I sort of tweaked them a little bit to get them more to a point where I like them probably a little bit closer to how Astia looks but um, yeah I really like how it turns out and um, there is one thing though I, I would probably slightly adjust next time I go to use F-Log and that is I would 
lower the exposure a little bit. So like I said, with most of the shots, I was working with the zebras and making sure they weren't uh, being displayed. So essentially most of the time I was exposing about two stops over or just under it. So I think next time I would expose it at just a stop over instead of two stops. The detail and color of the skin and stuff did look good. I just think it would have looked maybe a little bit better if I had have just exposed it a little bit less. Um, so in and around the one stop mark, because the shadows and everything looked good and I don't think there was any risk of them being underexposed anyway. So yeah, I think the perfect spot would probably be just a stop over. Um, so I'll maybe try that next time. When we were out shooting those clips, I did want to try some 4K 60, but I noticed that when you switch to 60 frames with 4K on the X-T3, it drops down to 200 megabit files, but that left me with something to compare it to. And I tried the same color grade and stuff as you can see with this clip. This is 4K 200 megabit files F-Log in the X-T3. And this is it with the conversion lot. And then with my adjustment layer. And you can see with the skin tones, they're just a little bit softer and they're not blown out, but they have a little bit more of that sort of glowy look. Um, just less detail. And like I said at the start, with the 200 megabit files, there just isn't as much room and yeah, this just kind of shows the difference between the 400 megabit and 200 megabit. Just less detail and a little bit softer and glowy looking. Uh, yeah, that's all I can say about that. So I would recommend if you're looking to shoot F-Log, make sure you're using the 400 megabit files on whatever camera you have, if it's available. If it only has 200 megabit files, then I would suggest just use the film simulations because they look really good and there's no risk of blotchiness or just any issues that come with recording um, in F-Log. But yeah, that was a nice little experiment again, take two on the F-Log situation. I'm much happier this time. I feel like I could use it now. I kind of understand the workflow. It, it does require a little bit more work, but at certain times it's, it's probably worth it. Um, I don't know if going forward for the videos, I would use F-Log just because the files are just so much bigger and it requires a bit more work and I just really like how Astia Soft looks, but um, it was nice to know that I can use F-Log and there shouldn't really be any issues in future. I'm gonna stop blabbering now because this feels like a long one. I didn't intend it to be, but hopefully you got what you wanted from it. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed it, or if you found it helpful, make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Maybe consider subscribing if you want to see more. Um, studio like i said the office slash studio is a work in progress definitely need some sound panels and some photos but i'm gonna i'm gonna do a, like a little uh, vlog in the next week or so to sort of just explain the process of this so yeah as we always say take it easy don't be a stranger